bow your heads and pray with me. Almighty God, we want to hear your voice and follow where you lead. We do not want to be those who are uncircumcised in heart and mind and soul, who oppose the Holy Spirit's movement in our lives, but we want to be those who follow you with joy, knowing that you walk us through the darkest of valleys into the brightness of your kingdom and are with us as our shepherd in good and in bad, all the way to the end, when you promise us by your grace and through your power, abundance of life. May the words of my mouth this morning be acceptable in your sight, O oh Father, and that the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, for you are our only rock and our only redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today is the fourth Sunday of, of Easter. And all throughout this Easter tide, it is our joy to always remember those words, to continue celebrating the great good news and glory of the resurrection. Today is a Sunday we like to call Good Shepherd Sunday for obvious reasons. Today, God's Word reminds us that our resurrected Lord is our shepherd, and He leads us from death into life, from slavery to sin, into obedience to the Lord, from the shallow things of the world around us into what Jesus calls in our gospel today the abundance of life, the kind of life that can come only from God. I want to use that collect for Good Shepherd Sunday that Father Allen led us in just a few moments ago to guide our thoughts today. So if you'll turn to page three of our leaflet, I want you to remember those words that we prayed. We ask the Lord to grant us first that we would know the voice of the Good Shepherd who calls us each by name. And secondly, that we would follow wherever he leads us. So this morning, my friends, let us open up our ears and hear his call. Let us get up on our feet and go forth to do his will. Because if we do both of those things, God promises us that he will be with us. Whether we are in the shadow of the valley of death or if we're quietly resting in green pastures by still waters, those of us who know his voice and follow where he calls us, we know a deeper and richer and far more abundant life than anything that this world could possibly give us. So this morning's sermon is all about listening and going, about hearing and following, about hearkening to the voice of the shepherd and then getting out to follow him for the sake of his glory. Now, before we dive into our scriptures today, I want to say a few things about shepherds and sheep. Because if Jesus is the good shepherd, then all of us, you and me both included, have the dubious honor of being the sheep in these stories. Now, if you know anything about sheep, you know that they are helpless in every single way. They for, for example, have no homing instinct whatsoever. If they are left to their own devices, sheep will wander from place to place for the rest of their lives as lost as they can be. And even if they're in sight of the sheepfold, they will never make it back there without guidance. Sheep are the ultimate followers. If one of their brother's sheep happens to walk off a cliff into the abyss, they are highly likely to just follow them, limbing-like, right over the edge. Sheep have no self-defense mechanisms whatsoever. If a wolf shows up to eat them, they don't run, they won't fight, they just clump together in a little group going, bah, bah, while the wolf eats his fill. So congratulations. You are the sheep in this story. All of us are helpless and lost. We're unsure of where home is. We're blind and willing to be led by the blind. And we are weak. When Psalm 23 
begins with those majestic words, the Lord is my shepherd, do we not realize how desperately we need him to guide us in our lives? Sheep do have one thing going for them, though, and that is that they have very acute hearing. When the collect asks God to let us hear his voice when he calls us each by name, that is a reference to the truth that sheep know the voice of their shepherd. A sheep of a particular, particular flock knows what their shepherd's voice sounds like. In the ancient Middle East, all the sheep of a village were kept in a big communal pen. And then every morning, the shepherd would come to the gatekeeper, and he would be admitted in the sheepfold by the sheer fact that by saying, good morning, sheep, all of his sheep and none of the rest of them would come flocking to the gate. Every other sheep would just stay there staggering around waiting to die, I guess, or be shorn or fall off of a cliff. But there his sheep would come to him and he would take them out into green pastures and beside still waters, which happens to matter because sheep are too afraid to drink from water that is on the move. Now, here's the last thing I want to say about shepherds before we open up God's Word. If night was to come, and a shepherd decided to keep his sheep out in the countryside where the grass was plentiful, then a shepherd would make a ring of stones, a kind of makeshift sheepfold out there in the wilderness, leaving a gap open at one end, and he would herd all of his sheep into that makeshift sheepfold, and then he would lay down across that opening gap, literally becoming the gate for the sheep. No sheep could then accidentally leave because they're too scared to step over those stones, and no wolf would come into the ring except through the door of the sheep. That shepherd would lay there and give his life, if need be, for the life of the sheep. Sheep may safely graze only if the shepherd is good, and literally lays his life down in the promise of protection. If the sheep will only hear his voice and go where he leads, they'll know the good, they'll know the abundant, and they'll know the safety and guidance of the loving protection of the shepherd. Now, these truths about sheep and shepherds make our Savior's words from the Gospel of John this morning all the more powerful. Remember that he's in the middle of a fierce debate with the Pharisees over the healing of the man born blind. So when Jesus says in verses 1 through 6 that you've got to watch out for anyone who doesn't come in by the gate of the sheepfold, because he's making it clear that anyone who comes to proclaim the word of God in any name other than Jesus is, is someone who doesn't come to the gate of the sheepfold in the village, but rather creeps in the back way and quietly whispers in the ears of the sheep until he convinces them that he can be trusted. And then he absconds with those who are not his own. Now, apparently, they didn't really get it, right? Uh, so, Scripture tells us that having failed with that analogy, um, looking at their confused faces, Jesus presses on in verses 7 through 10, changing the image a bit and calling himself the door of the sheep. Jesus takes that role of the shepherd who becomes the protective door of the sheepfold out in the wilderness promising them that only in him can true safety be found. Because if destruction comes for the sheep, he's the one that will take that destruction on himself, rather than let any harm come to his precious ones. And because Jesus is the good shepherd, and also the gatekeeper, and also the door, he is the only one who could promise the sheep true salvation. And that is absolutely a word for us today. If we trust him, then God's word promises that we can come in and go out and find pasture. Remember that today we pray that God would grant us first that we would be those sheep who listen for the voice of the shepherd when he comes to the door 
And secondly, that we would trust him. We would follow him wherever he leads, knowing that he is good and he will defend us and bring us into good things. Jesus makes it clear in John's gospel how desperately the prayer for Good Shepherd Sunday needs to be our prayer every day of our lives. Because if we listen to false shepherds, then we're going to go into places that are far from safety. And if we rely on anything other than him, then we cannot be surprised when the robber and the thief and the wolf breaks in to destroy. But if we open our ears and hear his call, and if we get up on our feet and we go forth to love and to serve our shepherd, then God promises that we'll have life as it's truly supposed to be. We'll have life that is abundant. The guidance and loving care of our Good Shepherd is on display in our other readings from Scripture today as well. In 1 Peter, Peter is addressing slaves who suddenly find themselves converted to the faith but living under the rule of non-Christian masters. And Peter tells them that if the Good Shepherd was willing to suffer pain and loss at the unjust hands of the leaders of Israel and the Roman government then his sheep must remember that suffering is going to be a part of the Christian experience. And so with confidence in our good shepherd, we simply do the things that Jesus did. Our shepherd sets for us an example of how we are to suffer when we are persecuted. Christ was our sheep door, and he let the wolf take his life rather than break in and take ours. He was abused and punished wrongly, but he did so for our transgressions and not his own. And he did so willingly out of love for us, his sheep. And he did all of that so that we would listen to his voice, that we would know that he is good, and so that we would allow him to lead us, no matter what the world holds for us, into abundance of life, even if that life includes suffering for the truth or suffering for those who need us to stand in solidarity with them as they suffer in this life. As Peter puts it, our shepherd calls us to cease living for our own desire. Stop looking out for ourselves and start looking out for those around us. We cease living for the sake of sin And we start to live for the sake of the righteousness that comes only from Him. And we face our hardships and sufferings with courage because we know, we know that our Good Shepherd is with us. Peter reminds us that before the Good Shepherd showed up in our lives, we were all sheep going astray. But through the death, the resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, we are invited to come back in to the sheepfold of the Good Shepherd and to do what He did out of love for the world. I think this reading from Peter makes that prayer all the more vital for us today. Because if we listen to false shepherds, like those who tell us that if you're a Christian, you will not suffer, then we wind up ignoring the voice of Scripture and may wander off into places that are far from safety. If we rely on anything other than his voice and his example, then the robber and the thief and the wolf are sure to break in and destroy. But if we open up our ears, listen to his call, get up on our feet and go forth to love and serve him in the world, then we'll know life as it's truly supposed to be. And that is a life that despite the way the world might perceive it, is that abundance that comes from a heart that trusts in the Lord. The church in Acts chapter 6 and 7 reminds us that what it means to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd and to follow where he leads. It's a long reading, but it's broken up into these two sections. Right at the beginning, we learn that first the church takes seriously that call throughout Scripture for God's people to care for the poor. And so they wind up reordering their whole church leadership structure so that servants can be appointed 
to care for the needy. And that is all done out of obedience to the voice of the Good Shepherd. And I love what verse 7 says in that chapter 6 of Acts, that the church grew exponentially when God's people were obedient to the call of the sheep. In the second half of that reading, we watch Stephen give us a model of how we can follow the shepherd all the way to the end. Stephen, as you know, is the first Christian martyr that we learn of, and he lays down his life for the sake of the gospel, the same way he watched his shepherd do it. In fact, he models Jesus' last breaths just like that we want to, right? The, the last words are, the Lord accept my spirit and do not hold this sin against those who are bringing me to suffering. In the church, we live the good life and the members of the church die good deaths. Indeed, the life of the early church makes it clear how vital is the prayer that we pray today because if we listen to false shepherds who tell us to watch out only for ourselves and our bottom lines and to let the poor fend for themselves. And we aren't following the shepherd. And we're wandering off into places that may seem safe to us, but are far from safety. Because if we rely on our own wisdom and we don't go where the shepherd leads us, then the robber and the thief and the wolf are sure to break in and destroy our lives. But if we open up our ears and we hear him calling and we get up on our feet and we go out to love and serve him, he promises to take us to life of abundance. Let me close this morning with the words of the 23rd Psalm. God leads us as our shepherd in both good times and bad. He takes us to green pastures and to still waters so that we might know him as the one who gives us good things, good provision. He doesn't promise that his sheep will never know the valleys of the shadow of death, but he does promise that he'll always be with his sheep. Sometimes in the midst of it all, we find him disciplining us with his rod out of love. Sometimes he uses that staff to whack us around a little bit and keep us on the straight and the narrow. But it is all of that because in the end, he wants to bring his sheep to everlasting life. How about you today? Are you in the sheepfold of our Lord? Are you listening to his voice Or is the siren song of the world around us overwhelming and too powerful for us? All of us are prone to wandering. We like what the world has to offer us. We love living in a culture that tells us where to go and what to buy and what to value. And when we suffer, how often do we find ourselves angry with God and demanding our rights? Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Today is the day we're invited to open up our ears and to listen to his call and to follow him wherever he may lead us because he promises that he will show us where life is to be found. I am the door in good and bad times, says Jesus. I am the one who loves you. And I am the one who will bring you through both joy and suffering into life abundant. Will we hear his voice today? Amen.